Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Multifamily and More Expert Series, where we dive deep into a specific topic with our expert guest in the area of real estate, mindset, or anywhere in between. This is a special five-part series we're doing on underwriting expenses with our guest, who I'll introduce here in a moment. Uh, my name is Jamie Gruber. I'm your host, and I'm happy to bring this to you. Check out the playlist so you can see all of the different uh, expense classes for you to underwrite on your next deal. My guest, Steve Lyman, is the owner and principal of Superior Management Systems, a third-party management company. He's also a syndicator investor with hundreds of units in his portfolio. Steve, welcome and or welcome back. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. I think this is that number three so far. We're recording number yeah. three. and Got the same shirt on. How they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is different days, Steve. This oh, is, yeah, different days. Sorry. Sorry. This is, we, we do this as they come out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this, yeah. It's not all at the same time. Come on. <laughs> all right, let's talk about, we're going to talk about contract services today, because this is an interesting right. one. Um, it's an underwriting line item. Some people are, I've heard some people say like, oh, contractors, like if I have a roofing contractor, I was like, no, no, that's not quite what it is. What are, what is contract services or what are the services that make up this line item? So um, in our company, on my p &L, contract services are snow and lawn care. And then any maybe fire suppression um, that you need to look at or pest control extermination is yeah. kind of what we fall into contract services. Okay. So these are expenses that you would have that somebody comes in to service your property essentially uh, for, right? Uh, you know, it's Correct. probably the best, yeah. way to, the best way to go about, yeah. go about it. Excuse me. It's not, just to be clear, it's not anything to do with um, a singular capital expense. So in other words, if if your, uh, one of your tenants' um, faucets broke, it wasn't working, was leaking, and you brought a plumber in to replace that, you would not consider that contract services, correct or incorrect? Correct. We would not consider that contract services. Okay. We'll talk about this expense line in a moment, but that, would you call that repairs and maintenance, capital expenditure? What would you call that? That would be under R&M. Yeah, repairs, repairs and maintenance. Yeah. Got it. So I think that's a clear distinction to make here. Contract services are those recurring expenses that you pay somebody to come in and service your property. Um, I, I don't know what else. We talked a little bit about it before. Like if you had like a water softener system and you had the, the company come out and replace filters and fill the salt briner every four weeks, like that might be an example of a contract. I would service. consider that. Yeah. Okay. To your point, maybe you don't do that, but okay. So yeah. how do you estimate the cost of contract services or can you? I think it's kind of hard. Um, you know, I will, uh, this is one that I don't put a ton of um, uh, thinking into because I mean, contract services are what they are. Most, most sellers or most people will have only snow and lawn in their contract services, maybe pest control, you know, things like that, but it's so minimal um, compared to uh, the overall uh, property that, you know, it's not something that I put a lot of time to, mm -hmm. but it, you know, it, it can make a small uh, difference, right? So I would say, you know, if we were talking a per door uh, dollar value for contract services, probably anywhere from 60 to a hundred bucks a door. That makes sense. Okay. And just to be clear on yeah. that too, I was thinking about this. We've talked about per door in all of these videos, because I think that's a really mm -hmm. great way for people to underwrite. Like, all right, how much is it going to cost me on each door that I have? That is a per year per door. So Correct. some people might that's think, man, that's a lot cost. per month, but no, it's, if you have 10 doors at a hundred dollars a door for contract services, it's a thousand dollars a year in expense that you would have, not a mm -hmm. thousand a month. So yeah. just be very clear on that. And, and also a disclaimer there, it obviously ranges in all of these that I say, you know, this per door range, it, it ranges significantly depending on the asset class that you're in, um, the market, you know, if you're in, say for the, our Michigan listeners, if you're in Royal Oak, you know, your per door cost might be a lot different than if you're in Alma, Michigan. Right. Right. You know. yeah, that makes sense. That's true. Asset class and everything else kind of factors in. For the purposes of this, where would you pe peg that 60 to 100 or really on all of these? What asset class are you looking at in, in your market, which is more central Michigan? What, what Correct, asset yeah. class would you say that that kind of applies to? Yeah. So, I mean, we buy assets anywhere from, um, call it Lapeer to Lansing up to Alma, uh, to the Bay City, Saginaw, Midland area. So mm -hmm. anything in between there. Um, and you know, we're probably, uh, I would say mostly B, B minus to C plus properties. Yeah. You know, these are, 
a lot of mom and pop owners, you know, that, that haven't ran their properties efficiently. So um, we find a lot of good value up there. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that applies like anybody who's listening to this in that area or any area like that, you can picture working class, blue collar, Midwest type of town, a lot of investors, whether you're on the coasts or living in these areas like that, that's a great asset class to invest in. And what I like about the per door range that you're giving, like you said, it's not exact. I mean, it could be 110 a door, it could be $42 a door, you know, like right. it, it really depends. And, but yeah, you, and you might have a, I mean, I apologize to cut you no, off, no, no. but uh, you might have an eight unit property that costs you a thousand dollars to get the snow removed each year. Yeah. Right. And obviously that's going to skew things. The bigger, the bigger the asset, you know, the, the more economical it becomes to have, you know, that's, great point. that's why people like to go big, right? They say, you know, the, right. the bigger you go, the more economies of scale that the you same have. amount of work, yeah. same amount of work. It's just yeah. more money. That's true. That's true. Good stuff. Okay. Um, any common mistakes you see? It's one of the questions we've been asking on all of these. So I'll just ask any common mistakes you see in underwriting this or, or anything that um, jumps not out? Really. It's like a fairly benign. It's, it's pretty uh, benign. I would say that, you know, if, if all else fails, just use the number that the, that the seller had in their income statements for the prior years. Um, mm -hmm. Because you can always go back and, and for snow removal, for example, you can get three quotes down the road and pick the, pick the least expensive one if you want, or if you feel that there's some value add that some snow removal guy has and pick the more expensive one, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but the, it's pretty consistent. Makes sense. I like that. All right, cool. Um, great. Where can people learn more about you, about superior, about all that you're doing? Sure. I think the best way would be to go to our website, which is www.superiormgmtsys.com. And there you can, you know, uh, find out more about us. You can uh, find my LinkedIn and, and Facebook pages and connect with me there. Yeah, he's a great photo on there. Even more perfect hair than you see right now. So you'll enjoy that. Uh, yes. Steve, thank you so much. You can check out the link below for Superior Management Systems, by the way, in this YouTube video. Steve, thanks for going through this with us. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me, Jamie. Absolutely.